Hello, my name is Robert Wolf, 96 Sports Community Manager and Engineer. Hello, I am Seth Saroop, and I'm the Applications Engineer for 96 Sports. And in this video, we are going to meet with the folks from Novtech to talk about the Chameleon 96, 96 Boards Consumer Edition board sold by Aero.com. Now, if any of you want to skip down the list, go visit the resources or explore Aero.com or the 96 Boards ecosystem, you can go check the description of the video below and find all the different URLs for the things that we're going to be talking about throughout this video. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guests from Novtech, Nazik and Yossi. Hello, I'm Yazik, Engineering Supervisor at Novtech. And I'm Yossi, I'm the VP Engineering. Novtech uh, entering its 21 years of existence. We specialize in a custom board development, uh, development board, and a variety of modules that help the engineering community to do a faster development of products. Thank you, Yossi and Nazik, for your introduction. And now let's talk about the specifications. So here is the Camino 96. I'm going to speak about the board, and Nazik will speak about all the enablement that we provide to be able to work with the board. Uh, as you can see, it's exactly the same form factor that is being defined for the 96 board consumer. Everything you're expecting to see from the SD card HDMI connector, micro USB, two USB type A port, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth, power in, the two expansion port. Um, there is slight differences between the full specification what we have on the board. For example, uh, due to the use of a ADI linear power solution, uh, this board can work from 5 volt to 42 volt, exceeding the 8 to 18 volt specification of the 96 board. Um, we have a UART connector, so any TTL to UART cable allow you to get the terminal output without the need for a mezzanine board. What is very unique about the SOC that reside on the Chameleon is that it's not just a processor with a peripheral. It's a processor with a peripheral and a very large FPGA. And that FPGA opened the door to do a lot of custom implementation. We'll speak about it later on. And all you need to do, which Nezek will explain in a minute, how to work with the FPGA uh, is on the board. There is no need for any additional hardware for you to be able to compile FPGA code and program the chameleon. And with that, Nezek, let's speak about the enablement. So for support documents, there is a portal that contains uh, such documents as schematic, bill of material, Gerber files, um, pre-compiled images, and a virtual machine with all the sources and a development um, environment set up. So you can easily get started with um, creating a new project and compiling a custom image. Um, to help you get started, there are such um, user guides on um, software on FPGA project. There's a um, user guide on how to get started with a FPGA um, and how to program the board using Blaster 2. Blaster 2 is the uh, solution that exists here on the board on the side that allows you to connect that to a PC and all this part of the circuit on the Chameleon is the bridging between the FPGA and the design software that's running on your computer. Great. So it actually that, that's actually a great feature, uh, you know, to have the uh, UR access on your board rather than having to use a mezzanine. I think that that will that, you know, that provides a lot of utility for any user that wants to, you know, access, um, you know, serial console or, you know, play with the board without a headless display, right? Or a headless display without needing a monitor, you can access the board. And then another thing I thought that was really cool that you mentioned um, was the fact that basically you have such a large range uh, for the power input. So essentially you can go from five volts to 42 volts that blows the specification out of the water and uh, allows for a lot more use cases. Great. So I think that now that we know about the board a little more, uh, we've heard about the Chameleon 96, all the cool features and all the resources that you can get uh, through their portals. Uh, I think it's time to talk about some use cases that might be interesting for you all to explore uh, while playing with your new Chameleon. So as we can all see, there is dozens of different boards behind Robert 
all of them trying to match the specification as much as possible. Well, the Chameleon 96 is very different from most of these board is the existing of the FPGA. FPGA is basically a, a, a fabric of logic element that allow you, the engineer, to create variety of hardware solutions. It can be from acceleration of uh, interfaces. It can be from adding a custom or a change to standard interface. Uh, where I see something that it's very unique is the ability to map serial interfaces to a memory map. So let the FPGA handle all SPI or I2C or your communication. And if the processor access a memory map, which is basically a mirroring the memory map or the register map of a peripheral that is on the other side of the serial connection. So acceleration, customization, and basically an engine to develop your own vision, you have full control of the hardware. So Nizik, what kind of you know, use cases would you be interested in building on the Chameleon 96? Uh, one of the use cases we are doing is uh, bringing camera into FPGA and having FPGA uh, and it allows us to do alpha blending or picture on picture, um, allows us enhancing the existing algorithms or in future um, bringing the new ones and having FPGA um, enables us to modify it and improve it as we go. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, I mean, it sounds very interesting. I know that when you're working with a computer or uh, you know little computers like this with the FPGAs, you can do a lot of hardware acceleration. So. Uh, Sahaj, um, are there any applications that you'd like to implement on the Chameleon 96? So a couple actually. Uh, the one would be open with OpenCL acceleration, which is which Intel kind of pushes this FPGA uh, sock towards. And the other one is I want to recreate a demo that was shown in San Francisco Connect uh, in 2017. Uh, and the person who was showing it off basically built an entire GPU uh, on the FPGA and the you know, interface that so it was kind of an open GPU situation there. And uh, that was done on a Cyclone 5, a uh, different board, but uh, I've kind of always been interested in porting that over to the Chameleon 96. Awesome, thank you. One of Aero and Novtech partner, a company called SecureRF, they, uh, on the Chameleon, they're running a key acceleration, security key exchange acceleration, where they can do uh, their performance is 500 times faster of calculating keys compared to doing that in software. Amazing. Yeah, so I mean, I've heard of so many cool applications that can be done on the on the uh, FPGAs out there. I haven't had a lot of opportunity to work with them as much as I'd like to, but, uh, you know, hopefully I'll get going with the Chameleon 96 um, maybe after this video. <laughs> and now I want, I want, can I add something to what you just said? Of course. Robert, in order for you to have a very easy start, take the manual that Nezik wrote, how to start with FPGA on the Chameleon. It will be a very smooth ride for your first FPGA project. Excellent. And I will most definitely check that out. So, um, Yossi, Nezik, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to close this video out now. So make sure everyone who's watching, go visit the 96 Boards campaign on arrow.com. Check out Novtech, their website, the 96 Boards product page at 96boards.org and explore the entire ecosystem. Simply find all of these links down in the video description. We look forward to seeing you. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Thank you, Novtech. Thank you, Yossi. Thank you, uh, Nazik.